The White House is pushing back on Republicans' criticism of President Biden for issuing a proclamation in support of transgender people. In a statement released on Friday, Biden proclaimed March 31st as Transgender Day of Visibility. Now, that day has been celebrated on March 31st every year since 2009. But this is the first time in 11 years that it has overlapped with Easter. Despite Biden following precedent, Republicans ripped the president for his proclamation. In a post on Twitter X, House Speaker Mike Johnson claimed that Biden, quote, betrayed the central tenant of Easter. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene also wrote that there was no length Biden and the Democrats won't go to to mock your faith and to thumb his nose at God. And in a statement, the Trump campaign called on Biden to apologize to Catholics and Christians, separating them, oddly, for his blasphemous declaration. Those same Republicans also took exception to the White House's guidelines for the annual Easter egg roll, asking for decorated eggs not to include, quote, any questionable content, religious symbols, overtly religious themes, or partisan political statements. But those guidelines, well, those have been in place for nearly 50 years. Caddy, it is just one bad faith argument after another. As noted, President Biden is a Catholic of deep faith. He, of course, went to Easter Mass yesterday. No word if Donald Trump went to any sort of religious ceremony. But it, it's another issue where facts don't matter, where Republicans are leaning in on the imagery that Trump is perhaps sent from God. He can hawk his own Bible and no one seems uh, to care. We had the lead story in the New York Times this morning is about how Trump is leaning into images of, of evangelical Christianity as in his appeal to supporters. The Biden White House is simply following tradition, but yet that's not breaking through. Is this, tell us what this means right now, the state of our politics. Um, tackling misinformation and disinformation in this era of for us, let alone for the campaigns, is incredibly difficult, right? We would be spending huge amounts of time on it. I know that, you know, at BBC, we have teams of people doing this. I'm sure in the Biden campaign, they have teams of people doing it as well. The question is, you know, even if you do correct the record, even if you do say, look, actually, this story, yes, there was a day recognizing trans rights that happened to be on the same day as Easter. That is the day that it is always planned. Does that get through to any of Trump's ardent supporters? Probably not. Does it get through to a few swing state voters um, that are actually going to be the people that decide the election? I guess that's the key, and that's who the Biden campaign needs to keep trying to reach out to say the information that you are getting, what you are hearing on Truth Social or other forms of media that you're listening to is not necessarily the facts. It's incredibly hard. I mean, combating, we know this, combating mis- and disinformation is, is really, really difficult. There is some indication in polling that uh, Donald Trump's support amongst white evangelical Christians may be softening. Yes, he's still getting 68% of the white evangelical vote in the latest Fox News poll, but that is down mm-hmm. from 73% in October. And look at the pushback that he got against that Bible sale from some evangelical leaders, Christian leaders. And I just wonder whether sometimes Donald Trump does something that even they find too difficult and that softening of the support that you're seeing. I think that's going to be, I mean, it's still a large chunk of evangelical Christians and they still see him as a kind of a messianic figure. But it's, it's interesting that it's down a bit and I think it's going to be an interesting trend to watch over the next six months, how much they stay with him if he carries on doing things like this. Bird brain, I call it bird brain. Nikki Haley has made an unholy alliance with rhinos, never Trumpers, Americans for no prosperity. She was sitting there like... She's gone crazy. She's a very angry person. She is not presidential timber. I don't need votes. We have all the votes we need. She is, she's gone haywire. There aren't that many never Trumpers anymore. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters back into the tent? I'm not sure we need too many. Hmm. That's a new Biden campaign ad highlighting Donald Trump's attacks on Nikki Haley in an effort to attract her supporters. Meanwhile, NBC News is learning key details about President Biden's newest campaign strategy, and that is getting under Donald Trump's skin. In the past few weeks, the president has ramped up the personal attacks against his Republican opponent in both private and public settings, targeting Trump's financial challenges, campaign tempo, and even 
his weight. Multiple Biden aides and advisors familiar with the approach tell NBC News that the strategy has largely been driven by Biden himself, and they're just following his lead. One Biden aide said, quote, there's just something about Joe Biden that gets under Donald Trump's skin more than anybody. And I think Joe Biden knows that. In recent days, the Biden campaign has posted the following attack lines, calling Donald Trump feeble, confused, and tired, weak, and desperate, broke, done, campaign can't raise money, lying about having money he definitely doesn't have, a loser, he must have injected bleach, old and out of shape. Well, there is that, Sam Stein. Um, the Biden campaign has been really good on rapid response. Yeah, I mean, uh, they they clearly want to agitate Trump. They want to uh, get him on um, the sort of side pursuits. They want to uh, get him to say crazy things. Uh, and I think, you know, you you've, you went down the list. One of the more interesting ones is they've accused him of uh, hiding in his basement during the past month, which is an inverse of what Trump himself was accusing Biden of uh, in the 2020 campaign. So clearly there's like a larger strategy here. Uh, they're trying to do uh, a version of psychological warfare against the candidate himself. Uh, and it's pretty telling because you can see Trump's reaction in real time on True Social. I will say on the rapid response front, you know, I, I did notice the uh, they quickly moved uh, to go after this uh, fake attack around um, you know, branding Easter Transgender Visibility Day. Uh, they were very quick up with it. Uh, I think they understand what uh, Caddy was talking about, which is that these stories, these um, myths, uh, this disinformation can travel in these sort of closed off ecosystems uh, pretty fast. And it's hard to reach these people who do not consume uh, news from traditional means. They'll get it from True Social, from other avenues where you won't get a correction. So you do have to move fast. And let me just say, you know, I don't, celebrate Easter, obviously. I thought the whole thing was bizarre, though, because, you know, what was the actual problem uh, here of having Transgender Visibility Day that happened to coincide on Easter? Why is that problematic at all? Isn't it supposed to be a holiday of acceptance? And I thought that was the, uh, the fundamentally weird part about this whole uh, faux controversy, which is that what are you actually mad about? Why does it, why does it make a difference that the days fall uh, on the same day this year? So uh, it's so interesting um, that I think the strategy, Charlie Sykes, of making a mockery of Trump is a good one because he doesn't get jokes. He doesn't like being embarrassed. It will really get to him when he posted, and this sounds so little in the grand scheme of things, but Trump posted about winning a golf tournament and he did some big all caps announcement about a tournament he won at one of his own clubs where he probably picked up the ball and put it in the hole, but whatever. Um, and the Biden campaign posted back or tweeted back, good job, Donald. Like, it was a joke to everybody. But mm -hmm. Donald will not get it. Not saying he's stupid. I'm saying he doesn't. There's something missing from his personality where he does not, and I've seen this firsthand, he doesn't get jokes about himself. They, he, they are right. lost on him. Um, but make no mistake, these times that we're in are dead serious. There's no joke about them at all. And if you look big picture at Trump's twisted strategy that is working on his base, it's to say something, but then say the opposite, but to get them to agree with both. So you say immigrants yes. are rapists, they're disgusting, they are bringing in, you know, all sorts of diseases. And then you have your politicians on con in Congress who are too weak to have their own minds. You have them block the border bill. Yeah. Um, you say you're for national security, global security, being strong. And Ukrainians are dying today mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. aid has yet to come. The list goes on, Charlie. Oh, and no. I guess the question is how the Democrats, because this isn't going to be an election about Democrats or Republicans. It's going to be a, an election about democracy. It is no joke. These are dead serious times. How is Joe Biden and uh, the Democratic Party going to be able to not get sidetracked, not get triggered by these daily rituals of, of freaking people out about 
whatever the issue of the day is, transgender posts that ends up being right. something that's been done, making a lie. How do they focus Americans on what's at stake? Well, it's obviously difficult because of these alternative realities out there. But they, what they need to do is not so much get under Donald Trump's skin to make him say crazy things because he'll do that on his own, right? Um, it is to point out that he's a fake and a phony, and the things that he claims to be are actually absurd. So, for example, on Friday, his big photo op was to go to the funeral of a New York police officer. Um, I think people need to be reminded that uh, that Donald Trump, you know, continues to uh, promise that he's going to pardon the January 6th rioters that attack and beat cops, tased cops that police officers died as a result of the violence he incited. So here is somebody, and again, this is the juxtaposition, what Donald Trump claims to be versus the reality. And I think that that can be highlighted. You, you mentioned this, you know, he's the big patriot, but he kowtows to the world's thugs. Uh, he claims to be for law and order, but he has aligned himself with people who uh, attacked police officers. Uh, he, uh, you know, he claims to be a Christian, but you know, what exactly is the content of his Christianity? Um, and, you know, the way you highlighted the contrast about, about Easter. You know, people look at Donald Trump, and Donald Trump claims to be something, and he has been for his entire life a fraud, a fraud and a phony. To the extent to which they can point this out, that Donald Trump, who claims to be this world bestriding successful businessman, is in, in fact somebody who has defrauded himself to much of his wealth. It is not as rich as or successful as he claims to be. And I think this is a chip, chip, chip away because there are people who look at Donald Trump. And, and this is one of the really weird things about our our world. The, I don't know, you've seen the, the sort of the online Trumpist porn where he's portrayed as looking like, you know, this buff superhero flying on an eagle carrying an AK-47, when in fact um, he is a, a soft, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a soft wannabe. And I think to the extent to which you highlight the gap between what Trump is pretending to be and what he really is, you might make some progress. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.